Good day, everyone, and welcome to the SDC 2019. And thank you for attending our session, More Than Foldables. My name is Nao Han. I'm a software engineer on Samsung Framework team, and I'm here with our friend from Google and Bisco. Today's session will begin with uh, the story of Samsung Foldables, and then Ken from Google will talking about optimized experience at large screen. And Ken, lead engineer from Bisco, will show a demo that how Bisco works greatly on Galaxy Fold. Okay, so let me begin my presentation. During the keynote session this morning, we announced our efforts toward to foldable phones and UX. Also, I believe you have noticed that we introduced a new type of foldable display. Samsung being a pioneer of foldable devices and innovation will not stop here. And we are excited to develop more incredible devices coming next years. As a software engineer, I also so excited about new form factor. And I believe this is not only my opportunity, but also new opportunity for all of us. From now on, I will be talking more specifically about Galaxy Fold. Last year at the SDC, we introduced our plan for the Infinity Flex display. Over a year, we put all efforts that we successfully launched Galaxy Fold to the market. With Galaxy Fold, we introduced two uh, new experiences. The first one is app continuity. The idea is you are using the app on the front screen, and you can unfold or open the devices then app stretch to fit the larger screen to help your app perform much better. Second one is multitasking. We call it multi, uh, act, multi-active window. You can split active windows up to three on Galaxy Fold. This feature provides uh, wonderful productivity at the larger screens. We started hardware innovation and suggested this incredible experience, but you know that it couldn't be completed without the developer's help. So we started uh, our test lab. So we wanted more and more developers to support these features. So at first, Samsung designed and developed a new UX and collaborate closely with Google to provide integrated OS support from Android since early 2018. Also, right after the SDC 2018, we set up the test labs in the cities from Mountain View to Beijing and to Seoul. There, we work with and encouraged partners and developers to test if their app are optimized for large screens and Galaxy Force and the ecosystem. So from this process, we learned some lessons. First of all, people are truly excited about new form factor. Even though we couldn't rebuild the exact shape of the uh, device for confidential issue, Everyone who saw the devices showed their excitement. But unfortunately, as you know, new form factor requires additional work. So in order to reduce your burden, we, uh, we have been closely talking to Google uh, from the beginning. At the result, Android 10 maximized what's possible on foldable devices from a continuity to multitasking and more. 
finally, all these features are not only working for foldable devices, but also working for other large screen devices in the ecosystem. My friends Ken from Google will be talking about more later in the session. So okay, let's go a little bit deeper about development on Galaxy Fold. As you can see on this screen, I made a sample media player app. Actually, we can make it within just 10 minutes from Android sample application. As you can see, it works without any problem at all. But as you know, small details can make huge difference. If you forget to consider some points, you may not pull leverage on Galaxy Fold because Galaxy Fold is physically can be folded and unfolded its display. So you have to properly handle screen size changes. I will show you some cases which may happen at Galaxy Fold when you didn't consider screen size changing properly. Well, actually, it is not that bad, but certainly it is not what we want at the Galaxy Fold. First one is non-resizable. Again, foldable devices physically can be folded and unfolded, so we strongly recommend the app to be resizable. Second one is data loss. When screen size is changing, the default behavior is recreating. With this recreating process, you may lose your data or progress, etc. Third one is layout issue. When the user unfolds the device, the user expects an optimized experience and layout for the changed the screen. So maybe you need to re-lay out in certain case by yourself. Okay, let me go uh, explain more details one by one. Non-resizable, to ensure the seamless experience between uh, screens, we strongly recommend the app size to, app to be resizable. We keep saying, uh, please recommend the app to be resizable because if the app is not resizable, under the framework, try to keep window size of the app, even though physical screen size is changing. Because of this, the app runs in the compatibility mode like that. You can see the letter box in there, and there is a list of but or it is impossible, such as big screen to small screen, it is impossible physically. So in this case, application has to be listed. So then how to make an app resizable? If your target SDK version is higher than 23, application is resizable by default. In order to in other obvious way, to make an app resizable is set resizable activity value as a true in your manifest file. You can set this at application for all or set at specific activity that you want. Data loss. Folding and unfolding events cause configuration changes at, as you know. In the Android framework, recreating its default behavior of configuration changes. If you forget to save and restore current data when the app is recreating, you may lose your essential data or progress, etc. The solution is actually quite simple. Save states before the activity destroyed and restore states it when creating. In this case, save the played data URL and timestamps at on save instant states, which is called 
before the activity is destroyed. Then restore the data and set it the data information again at on restore instant states, which is called after the activity is created. Last one is layout issue. As I mentioned earlier, default behavior for configuration changes is recreating. Because of recreating, the app will relay out according to new screen properties. But in some cases, like on game, you may not intend to recreate your app. In this case, you have to optimize the layout manually. For dynamic layout, you have to define configurations at the Android manifest file. Smallest screen size, screen size, and screen layout are the changed configurations when folded and unfolded. When configurations are changing, on configuration changes will be called. You can handle changed configuration here. So in, in this case, you set the URL and uh, timestamp again in configuration changing. OK, now let me show you the optimal experience at the Galaxy Fold. I really like the moment when I open the Galaxy Fold singing on apps seamlessly between screens. Actually, who doesn't, right? So please let, let make your app much better with small details. Next, my friend Ken from Google will be talking about optimized experience for the large screen. Please welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Noam. So uh, talking a little bit more about beyond just the Galaxy Fold, the apps that we create run on a bunch of different form factors. So we look at phones. It's generally what we all develop and test for uh, out of the box. Uh, users are generally going to be using your app for uh, quick actions, things that they can just kind of pull their phone out, uh, get something done quickly, and then continue on with whatever they're doing. It's generally going to be used entirely with touch. Um, not a lot of people hook up their uh, keyboards and mouse to their phone. And it's also very portrait-based. Uh, looking at tablets, uh, we're looking at kind of not as mobile of a device. Uh, it's harder to kind of just walk around, pull a tablet out to get something quick done. And so it's going to be used in longer sessions, uh, in deeper usage uh, patterns. People are really going to just be trying to get stuff done. It's still mostly touch-focused, uh, but we do start to see a lot more usage in landscape uh, due to the, uh, the screen size being uh, wider. As Nguyen talked about, um, with foldables, it's kind of that hybrid between a phone and tablet where if people are trying to get stuff done quick, they'll use the, um, the phone in a folded state. Uh, but if they want to maybe write a longer email out, work on a document or something like that, they'll unfold the screen. Uh, we also start to see aspect ratios getting in situations that we generally don't test for. On the Galaxy Fold, there's a, a 21 by 9 screen on the front. Uh, and then inside, we get closer to that kind of one by one, uh, completely square aspect ratio. And then talking about the kind of furthest from phones is desktop environments. So things like Android apps on Chrome OS, uh, Samsung Dex mode, um, you're going to see the longest usage sessions uh, here for your application. People are really trying to get uh, a lot of things done. Um, and they're going to be kind of involved in your app um, and working on it for pr the longest amount of time. It's keyboard and trackpad first, uh, or mouse. It's also landscape first. And people expect to be able to resize windows um, in this environment. Um, the kind of difference here between foldables and desktop environments is foldables is kind of a brand new form factor. Uh, people are still learning kind of the best usage patterns. Whereas on desktop, people have used computers for a long time. So there's things that they generally expect to be able to do, uh, such as window resizing. Uh, talking about uh, Chromebooks, um, this is also where most devices you'll see are uh, x86 architecture versus ARM. 
Uh, and Android App Bundles helps you kind of ship smaller APKs um, for only the, and ship only the, the platform resources uh, that are needed. So let's talk a little bit about what is actually different. Uh, first is one size no longer fits all. You have to think about how to handle different screen sizes, um, aspect ratios, even things such as like uh, input patterns. Whether it's layouts, uh, navigation patterns, or even uh, image resources and things like that, uh, you can't just ship one set. Uh, again, one size no longer kind of fits all. There's different contexts of use. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, people are gonna be using your app with different goals depending on the devices and form factors that they're using it on. Um, even just looking at uh, the Galaxy Fold, uh, when you open the screen, you have the ability to have more immersive experiences if you're a game or a media app, um, or you're able to kind of really harness the screen size um, and use multi-window and multitasking if you're something like a messaging app or a productivity app. Whereas on the front screen, it's really all meant for just, you know, open the, uh, pull the phone out, try and get something done quick, send a message, uh, and things like that. Um, app continuity and configuration changes in general are just uh, unavoidable anymore. Um, no longer can you just throw a resizable activity equals false uh, tag in your manifest, uh, lock portrait, uh, and kind of move on without having to care about restoring state and things like that. Uh, nowadays with um, unfolding devices, uh, resizing your app in a free form environment, uh, and even just orientation changes, um, you really have to think about uh, how your app is handling configuration changes and, and even are you testing these? Um, are you making sure that you're keeping state, uh, scroll position, and things like that? So let's talk a little bit about, from a UX and UI perspective, uh, things to look at and what is uh, something that we see lots of uh, issues with, with, with applications. Um, one of them is, is really just new aspect ratios. So with uh, new devices like the Galaxy Fold, as well as uh, things like Dex Mode and, and Chrome OS bringing these kind of freeform windows, uh, you're gonna see your application be in aspect ratios that you've never tested for or, or really experienced. Uh, if you're a messaging app or a communications app, uh, people are gonna wanna make you really tall and narrow and throw you to the side as they're you know, watching uh, media or playing a game. Uh, and so really think about how you're testing and supporting these in whatever your development pipeline looks like. If necessary, use the um, new min aspect ratio flags uh, and the existing max aspect ratio flags uh, in your manifest to kind of restrict your app um, if it makes uh, sense for you. Um, navigation patterns. Uh, larger screen generally requires a little bit different approach uh, and so as you can see here, this is a sample photo viewer app that we created, and it has a bottom nav with uh, three items. It's kind of what we're used to on mobile phones. It's very easy to, to press and interact with. But if we look at something like a tablet, um, where it's really wide and people are using it in landscape, the three button nav on the bottom gets extremely stretched. It's really hard to tell where one item ends and one item begins. And it's hard to tell what is really actionable. If I have a mouse, can I click anywhere, or do I have to only click on the icon? And so we recommend, if you're in this type of kind of form factor and screen size, to try and pull your navigation out to the left side, where not only is it a little bit easier to touch and, and click, uh, but you can give more of a label, show a little bit more information, uh, and let the user know exactly what they're going to do. The other thing that we recommend uh, taking advantage of is instead of only having three options, uh, you really have the ability to throw kind of submenus in there uh, and show more um, items for the user and allow them to do things with a lot less clicks. So talking more about kind of making people more efficient, um, the bigger screen sizes and different aspect ratios really uh, make you rethink the kind of layouts that you're using. And this doesn't just mean throw a master detail pattern in, throw a bunch of text at the user, uh, and call it a day. Whether this is building out more immersive experiences if you're a media app, so maybe thinking about how you can um, ship bigger images or allow playback uh, on things like menu screens and, and areas like that, um, or even just giving the user a little bit more white space around different objects on your layouts, 
to just make it a little bit easier on the eyes, uh, and it's not just throwing uh, words at them. Unfortunately, there's no one-size-fits-all solution as your brand and product is going to really uh, dictate what your application will look like as you get larger. Um, and check out our material studies for inspiration. The material design team went through and did a couple of design sprints where they built out uh, mock products and, and layouts on all these different form factors, and they go into detail about why they chose uh, some of the decisions that they did. Uh, and we're going to take a look at one uh, now, which is a, an app called Reply. So as Google, we love making messaging apps. Um, but this is actually um, a very kind of lightweight email client. And its brand statement is, is really that it's designed for clarity, uh, legibility, intuition, and ease of use. And it's supposed to express this kind of uh, friendliness but competent uh, atmosphere. And so as you can see here, as we go from a phone to a tablet to a desktop, we don't really uh, showcase a whole bunch more information. You may get a little bit more of an email preview text as well as being able to see a couple more uh, attachments on screen. But we pull the, the nav out from the bottom to the left side. Uh, and on tablets, it's icon only. Uh, and we just give a lot more white space around the emails uh, to just make it a lot more friendly on the eyes. It doesn't overwhelm the user and things like that. Let's say you're something like a really kind of data-driven or tech-driven app. Uh, your kind of design patterns as you get larger uh, may look different than this. So let's talk about multi-window. So one of the changes that we made in Android 10 is to uh, kind of change the activity lifecycle a little bit where all top focusable activities that are visible are now in a resumed state. So before Android 10, if you were visible but you were not the focus activity, you were placed in a uh, in pause state and you got the on pause callback. So we're changing that now so that everything is resumed uh, and hopefully we'll have the lowest amount of kind of app compatibility uh, changes that you will have to make. Your activity can still be in a pause state if there is a transparent activity on top of you um, or you're not currently focusable, uh, such as like if your activity is in a picture-in-picture -picture mode. Um, we did add this metadata flag um, that you can place in your manifest for uh, devices that are still running on Android P, uh, where you can get this behavior uh, such as Galaxy Fold. And so if you add uh, this metadata flag, you will get the same kind of multi-resume uh, behavior um, even if that device um, is not on Android 10. Uh, one of the challenges with kind of more devices having uh, larger screens and being able to use multi-window uh, substantially easier is that there are some uh, exclusive resources. And so things like camera and microphone uh, are only able to be used by one app at a time. And so make sure that you're watching for uh, camera availability callbacks, and, and microphone callbacks uh, to make sure that you're grabbing the resources when they're available and you're not expecting them to be available if they're not. Setting resizable activity equals false uh, does not get you around this problem. It does not guarantee things like camera and microphone access because there could be an activity that's on top of you. And so we added a callback um, called on top resume activity change. Um, where you'll get notified if your activity is the current um, top resumed activity or not. And this is really where you want to go grab those camera resources back again um, or be all right with no longer having access to the camera and make sure you're kind of handling that correctly. We can't talk about multi-window without talking about drag and drop. And users, as you get to these larger screens, specifically when you get to uh, desktop environments such as Chrome OS or Dex, uh, there's certain patterns that people kind of just expect to be available, and drag and drop is one of them. Um, so not only are, are users kind of expecting these on certain platforms, but you're able to really just make your users substantially more efficient. So whether you're like a productivity app um, or a messaging app, you should really look to see if this makes sense uh, for your use case and consider adding support uh, for things like text and, and images. So that's all great, uh, but how do you actually test these things? So um, with Android 10, uh, we built out uh, two foldable emulators. Uh, one is a 7.3 inch 
uh, emulator, and the other is an 8-inch emulator. Uh, one thing to, to call out on uh, the 7.3-inch is that this was modeled directly after the Galaxy Fold, and so the front, sc the front screen is 21 by 9, and so this is really the best emulator that you can use to test some of those kind of different aspect ratios that you probably currently don't have any devices for. And with the emulator, you can test things such as uh, how your app handles app continuity, um, the new compat mode, and maybe how your app looks in that use case, uh, and then multi-resume. And so I'm gonna hand it off now to Kane from Visco, uh, where he's gonna talk a little bit about how they took these practices and put them uh, into the actual app. Thanks, Ken. And my name is Kane Wong. Um, I'm an Android engineer at Visco. <clears throat> For the past several years, I've been working to improve and modernize our Android application architecture. And I'm also the engineer who worked on getting our application ready for the Galaxy Fold. Uh, but before I get into that, a little bit about our application. This goes a mobile app that allows its users to create, edit, and share professional quality photos on their mobile device. We have a global community of creators, and our mission is to help everyone fall in love with their creativity. We launched Visco for Samsung into the Galaxy Store in 2018 with an exclusive set of preset filters. And since then, we've been working on a number of optimizations for better support of a variety of screen configurations. So we saw the opportunity to work with the Galaxy Fold device as a great way to move this effort forward. There's a number of reasons that we are excited about the Galaxy Fold. <clears throat> First of all, the potential for expansion in multi-window options for an immersive creative experience. Secondly, we're excited about the beautiful pictures that the device's powerful cameras are capable of capturing. And finally, we're excited to see our app on the bigger tablet-like screen for a more expansive photo editing and browsing experience. Now, as we planned our enhancements to the Visco app, we used two guiding principles. First, we wanted to make sure we maintain uh, the user's state as they transition from one mode to another. This includes going from folded to unfolded mode, but also into and out of multi-window mode and through various screen resizes that the device allows. And secondly, we want to take advantage of the larger tablet-like screen that the unfolded uh, device gives us and, in short, have a delightful tablet experience. The enhancements we apply to our application fall into four categories. First, app continuity, or ensuring we maintain that user's state as they transition into different configurations. Secondly, we've made some enhancements to how we handle our landscape rotation. Third, we made sure that all of our layouts are responsive to size and aspect ratio changes. And finally, multi-active window support. So for app continuity, we wanted to make sure that a user can seamlessly transition from folded to unfolded mode and into and out of multi-window mode. As you can see in the video, um, what you're seeing is a user going from folded to unfolded mode in the middle of editing a photo. When we first started testing this, we were happy to discover that most of our screens just worked without any additional coding needed. This has uh, largely due to the work we have done recently improving our app architecture. However, a few of our older, more complicated screens did require some work, and this image edit screen is one of them. Um, when we first started looking at it, it wasn't maintaining the image edit state when the configuration change would, uh, when the configuration would change. And because of the complexity of the screen, fixing it required a number of changes and a number of custom views, mostly relying on the uh, instance bundle state to save and restore state. Visco was originally designed to be displayed on the standard phone in a portrait aspect ratio. The use of a bottom nav and a top header don't leave a lot of room for content if we allowed rotation uh, with these type of devices. But once you get into a wider screen, like you get into Unfolded Galaxy, then allowing rotation of the app screens makes a lot more sense, 
and actually results in a pleasant experience, which you can see in this video. So we implemented a formula to take advantage of both scenarios based on the screen size. And the formula is such that an unfolded Galaxy Fold device is considered a tablet where landscape rotation should be allowed. But the folded device is considered a phone where it should not. We then added code to our activities to make use of this formula to dynamically allow or disallow landscape rotation. For one screen, we did opt out of this logic, and that was the camera. And the reason for this is we wanted to keep a consistent edge where the shutter button is located, regardless of how you rotate a device. Now we try to make use of relative sizing mechanisms in all of our layouts as much as we can, but there are several components in our app that require explicit sizing based on the window size. These include some horizontal carousels and image grids that are nested inside of a vertical recycler view, like you can see in this video. To address these components, we moved away from querying, from the views querying the window size only in instantiation, and instead we exposed a singleton observable windows dimensions object, which any such view could subscribe to and observe those changes as they occur. Moving forward, we're continuing to explore how to make better use of tools like constraint layout to avoid needing to compute sizes based on window size. But at least when we need a window size now, we have a sim simple central mechanism for observing it. Finally, to enable multi-resume or multi-active window support, we started by simply enabling the feature with the single line in the Android manifest. What you can see here is our camera working as we're scrolling in another window. Now after enabling it, we just did a lot of testing um, and looked for any issues that we might have. And luckily we haven't run into any yet while we continue to test. We're also looking at ex uh, expanding this a step further, um, allowing certain screens to open in their own windows when you're in multi-window mode. And so far, our architecture patterns are paying off in these explorations. But the bigger challenge is dealing with the navigation implications of this. For example, what does a back action mean if you just open a new window in a second window? Also, when you're clicking a link in that newly opened window, should it open in the same window or back in the first window? These are some of the questions that we're continuing to ask as we explore this capability. In summary, developing for the Galaxy Fold has been a great learning experience for us. Some key takeaways that we got out of it are, first, keep your state safe from the Android UI lifecycle. We highly recommend using architecture components, live data, and an MVVM pattern. Also, soft plug for the Android data binding library because it is awesome and we use it extensively. Second, assume your window size can change at any time. And if you need a window dimension in a calculation, be sure you implement some sort of observable or listener type pattern so that you can recalculate any time the screen size changes. Finally, update your test plans. Make sure that all screens are being tested across configuration changes, and this is especially when you're adding a new UI component. I'm gonna hand it back off to Naum. All right, uh, thank you for attending our session. And we also run our booth with a small test lab in the main hall. There is no uh, Q&As now, but if you have any further question, please drop by our booth. And you can easily find us. It is located really close to entrance gate and right next to the Galaxy Zone. Thank you again for your attending. Thank you.